Hello everyone, it's me Clayton. I just finished watching Mank, the newest big, based on a true story film from Netflix that was directed by David Fincher based off a screenplay from his late father Jack Fincher and is a story about the writer of Citizen Kane, Herman J. Mankiewicz. And while it happens to have some, some historical inaccuracies, it does remain as a rather interesting film that happens to not only recreate the spirit and the look of films from the 30s and 40s, but also happens to provide some interesting parallels with the politics and films of that era to the politics and films of today. But let's get to the story, shall we? The story stars Gary Oldman as Herman J. Mankiewicz, as he's contracted by Orson Welles to essentially write Citizen Kane, or at least the very first draft of it. And when it, it's found out that Sir Mankiewicz's script happens to target William Randolph Hearst, played by Charles Dance, people are wondering why he has a certain beef with Mr. Randolph Hearst, how he's possibly challenging a man who could theoretically destroy him in a second, and we also happen to see, and we also happen to see how he ended up coming up with the various ideas that were eventually used in the famous 1941 film, leading up to the point where he gets his Oscar, albeit not physically. At the, at the Oscars of, the, of that year, where Citizen Kane was nominated for nine categories, but only won one for Best Original Screenplay. Now, Citizen Kane, as I'm sure many people know, is an iconic film that is still celebrated decades after it was originally released. So seeing this look at 1930s and 40s Hollywood, especially done in a black and white format with an orchestral score and the kind of acting you'd expect from the era definitely adds to the authenticity of the film, and it does show that David Fincher is definitely a man for details. And the script is also manages to range from being rather funny to rather insightful to letting you know that this was definitely made by someone close to David Fincher, in this case his own father, because only someone close to Fincher would, would write some of these lines and have several F-bomb-laden monologues from Oldman mixed with some genuinely, well, interesting insights into the thoughts of Orson Welles and Herman J. Mankiewicz and the various other people at MGM Pictures and RKO Pictures and Paramount and all the other studios that are portrayed in the film. So not only is the look of the film and the style of it very 1940s intentionally, but it also happens to draw some parallels between the politics of, of the 40s to the politics of now. Not... Not in a way that's uh, pandering to the audience, like it doesn't reference Trump or anything, but it definitely does show how history can repeat itself in a certain ways. But it also never forgets to be a film that's about the making of one of the most famous films of all time, at least partially. And while it does happen to essentially delve into those interesting aspects at points, it never forgets to make Herman J. Mankiewicz a very human character. He's an alcoholic. He's kind of a womanizer. He sometimes doesn't know when to stop talking, even when his life's on the line. But you have to admire someone who, with, with the amount of passion he has and the kind of things that have to be said to people who need to hear them, even if it's the awful truth that hurts them. And even if he's, not ex he's kind of a loose cannon, as said by Orson Welles himself. But he's not the only great character and not only the only great actor in the film, Charles Dance is also pretty good, and I always love when he sinks his teeth into an antagonistic role. Amanda Seyfried is also quite good in the film, even though I feel she was only used really effectively in a few scenes, but in the few scenes she does have, she does a fine job. And the rest of the cast is also very, very well done. It doesn't feel like they just chose these actors for their big names. It feels like they chose them because not only do they fit the style and era of the film, but they add to the, to the film through their acting and through their understanding of these real people. This is a biographical drama, after all. So despite some historical inaccuracies, that hardly matters when it comes to enjoying this film for not only its style, but also its story of giving us part of... Uh, what made what made Mankiewicz so interesting, and when it comes to the parallels of Hollywood of the 40s and at the time, and how they still end up relevant today. 
So, I definitely say give Make a shot, especially if you're a film junkie. I give it a 9 out of 10. See you next time.